The Survivor Auction, a time-honored tradition that started all the way back in Season 2, is a glorious, fun-filled reward where everyone is given money and can bid to their heart's content for food, advantages, and even mystery items. While it started simple enough, it has evolved over time to bring us some of the best moments in the show and is usually a highlight in every season that it is in. So let's look at it from the beginning, from where it began, and get all the way to where we are now and back in the great deals, the bad deals, and that time Sugar messed with Randy and his cookies. Thank you for supporting this channel. Patreon makes this channel possible and makes videos like these happen. This video was made exclusive to the patrons and was chosen by them. If you want to help this channel grow and make even more content, then consider joining the Patreon. You get all of the channel's videos early and even get to pick which survivors I tell the stories of. Thank you for your support. So let's rewind time and go all the way back to season two, Survivor, the Australian Outback, the first ever Survivor auction. Every player is given money for themselves that they can spend on bidding for items or they can keep that money and take it home with them. Either way, it's their choice. So what is the first ever item in this glorious food auction where people will buy entire meals and get full on the gluttony of food consumption? Well, first item, $60 for four tasty Doritos and a nice big old thing of salsa to go with it. Wow! Four Doritos and a little thing of salsa for 60 bucks? Eh, we're kind of off to a slow start. Nick does buy it though, and it really doesn't get that much more impressive as Jeff offers a spoonful of peanut butter and four squares of chocolate for $80 that actually ends up selling for $260 to Elizabeth. Three crackers sell for 120 to Nick. He's getting a lot of bad deals. A slice of pizza sells for 180 to Keith. Until finally, something of remote value is actually available. Iced coffee and chocolate peanut butter energy bar. A little bit of protein. Still not amazing, but Colby does buy it for $280, but it actually gets better. Survivor finally ponies up and offers a full meal of turkey, mashed potatoes, bread, and I think green beans. Jeff doesn't really clarify, but what is interesting is that Elizabeth and Tina actually pool their money together to outbid Keith and in essence break the auction as it was never established if they could pool money or not, but teaming up clearly is the way to go for something bigger like this. Survivor then introduces their first ever mystery item, or as we will call it, a possible trap. Since this has never happened before, no one knows what to expect as Amber bids 200 on it and wins. And what does that money get her? That's a tall glass of Herbert River water. Ah! Yeah! <laughs> a big old glass of river water, essentially garbage. And that's pretty much it for the first ever auction. Jeff doesn't even close this out with the gavel, which he will do pretty much every time from here on out. But we move on to the next season, Survivor Africa, where Survivor has definitely increased the value of the food items they are selling. And there is some progression made here as to how the auction works. For every item so far, Jeff is given a starting price. Well, for the beer he offers in Africa, he still does that. He says, we're starting the bid at 4,000 shillings, but Big Tom is shrewd and offers 1,000 shillings instead and actually wins and gets away with this, showing that Jeff's rules maybe aren't as hard and fast as we thought. Thousand. I'll give a thousand. Started at four. I, I don't care. I'll be at a thousand. <laughs> Sold a big song. One thousand shillings. Survivor then brings back the mystery item, and as we know, the only mystery item that's ever happened has, has really sucked. So when Kim Johnson wins, it turns out to be a hell of a meal. <laughs> So now we know for a fact that not every mystery item is a big old glass of river water. It can be great as well, which brings an interesting ripple to mystery items from here on out. The next mystery item gets sold to Big Tom, and this time Big Tom acts like he may be getting screwed over. Instead, we get one of the most memorable moments in Survivor history, as Big Tom and Ethan wins a big plate of food that has ham on it. But since Ethan is Jewish, he won't eat the ham, so Big Tom cannot contain his excitement about this fact. Oh. Hey, ham! He's a Jew and he won't eat the ham! Hey, he's a Jew! He's a Jew! Chicken. With that, we move on to two seasons later, Season 5, Survivor Thailand, and a twist is added to the auction. Instead of waiting until the post-merge game where everyone is bidding for themselves, what if the auction was in the pre-merge and the tribes had to work together? 
and confuses not only us, but the castaways as well. Oh, children! We got mail! Ah! What's in there? Thousand dollars in twenty dollar bills! American! American! <laughs> Buying food, it's an auction. Buying food. It's a gambling thing! No Sherlock. And another twist is added into this auction as well. Jeff makes an offer they can't refuse. Well, they do all refuse it, but you know, deep down inside, they really want to do it. Does anybody here want to switch tribes? Does everyone know I hate this tribe? I want to leave. I was so tempted to switch tribes, so tempted. So no one flips probably because of multiple factors, but nonetheless, nothing comes of this. Jeff then explains that this auction works a little differently. Instead of everyone having their own money and bidding for their own food items, instead each tribe has $1,000 to share on items that they will all have basically making every item a fight between two tribes instead of between like six, seven, or eight individuals. Despite this twist, it isn't actually all that interesting as pretty much everyone gets an embarrassment of riches and food. However, the mystery item returns, and what is it this time? Let me tell you about what you just bought. Nicely seasoned, very healthy, organic, and indigenous. Baked grubs. Uh -huh. <laughs> While this auction is great for the castaways, it really is just watching everyone enjoy food. Not much in the way of drama as the other covered item is a massive hot fudge sundae. That is until the nachos are up for sale and Jeff teases that these nachos, they come with something. Could it be something largely beneficial to the tribe at large? Could it be like a tarp? Well, Chewy Gone wins the plate and Jeff does his best to have Jan guess what goes with nachos and- Beer. You're on the right track. Tacos. What? what goes with nachos? Enchiladas. Margaritas. Damn. Oh, yeah. Jeff gets mad at Jan as if, duh, everyone knows that margaritas go with nachos. I mean, I didn't know that, but I'm glad that Jeff informed me that it does. With that, we move on to season six, Survivor of the Amazon, where they thankfully move the auction back to the post-merge where it belongs. And this auction introduces a new wrinkle to the mystery item. It started off normal enough with him selling a mystery item to Alex for 240, but before he finds out what it is, Jeff offers him a deal. I'll make you an offer, okay? This is what you own. If you want, you can trade it for this. Alex ultimately does not take Jeff up on the steal, and as it turns out, he turned down lasagna and instead gets a bowl of manioc, which is what this season's version of rice has been. Later on in the auction, Jeff puts up pancakes, scrambled eggs, and bacon, but once again, it comes with a mystery item. And what could that item be? This item, scrambled eggs, bacon, pancakes, and it comes with something else. Does margaritas go with this as well? Well, Butch wins the bidding with $400, and what does that mystery item end up being? Oh. Where's the best place to have breakfast? I love having breakfast at home with my wife and kids. In bed? Part. What's gonna happen today? Oh, your own you bed and pillow. What? I'm not sure why Jeff keeps thinking that people are going to understand his mystery item questions, but he will push them in the right direction until they get it. However, we have yet another wrinkle to the auction, letters from home. Whoever bids the most can buy their letter from home, which Christy does fair and square. Once, twice, sold. Come get your letter from home. Jenna Maraska then has a meltdown because she didn't win. Now, why didn't she win? Because she bought chocolate and peanut butter earlier, not because Christy threw down 500 and made sure she couldn't get it. However, Jeff's heart grew three times bigger seeing Jenna's tears. Well, I don't want this to be a bad thing. The auction's supposed to be fun. I got these other letters here. No reason we can't put another one up for bid. 120 to Jenna. Once, twice, sold to Jenna. Letter from home. She does win her letter, and that is it for the Amazon. The auction takes a three-season hiatus and returns in the 10th season, Survivor Palau. Once again, the mystery item returns, and Stephanie and Karen pull their money together and decide to split whatever it is that they bought. They win the bidding at $260, but like in the Amazon, Jeff offers them a trade. Unlike Alex, who kept what he owned, they decide to shove their nose into the covered part, try to smell what is underneath, which is a brilliant idea. Using that to decide, they trade. And what do they miss out on? Well, here's what you bought. Crackers and cheese. You made the right- <laughs> Cheeseburger, fries, and a soft drink. But it ends up working out as they win a cheeseburger and fries. 
However, Jeff does this mystery item thing again, and later on Ian and Greg pull their money together to win, but he immediately stops them from getting up so they can't pull what Stephanie and Karen just did. Before hey, you get up, let me make you another offer. If you want, you can trade it for what's in here. Can I stick with what you bought? This is what you did not buy. Oh! This time Ian keeps what he bought and it was absolutely the right decision as if he had traded he would have gotten live crabs instead of his Italian dish. Immediately following that another wrinkle is added to the auction. You know how on eBay you imagine this wonderland where every item can be bid on and whoever bids the most wins? Well it isn't like that for a lot of people selling items on there, in fact a lot of items are like just buying it from the store. First one to pay x dollars gets it. Jeff must like this idea a lot though, as he does this as well. What is that? Oh. Beer. One cold beer. First $40 gets it. I got it. Jeff then brings back the option to buy letters from home. Tom wins the bidding at $220, and unlike in the Amazon, Jeff then says that anyone else who wants to pay the same price as Tom can have their letter as well. $220 is what it costs Tom to get his letter from home. Anybody else wants theirs for the same price, you can have it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take mine. Four other players do take him up on the offer, and the precedent is now set for how to win letters in future auctions. We then scurry along to the next season, Survivor Guatemala, where we actually get our first non-food and non-letter item. Instead, Jeff puts up an individual mosquito net for auction. It must be pretty bad in Guatemala to have this be an auction item. Next item is not a food item, individual mosquito net. Oh. <gasps> 20. 40, 60. Lydia wins it for $140, and finally, something really big is added to the auction that will shape many future auctions as well, for better or for worse, and it starts right here in season 11. Something a little different. Inside this envelope is a huge advantage at the next immunity challenge. An advantage in the next immunity challenge. Never before has an advantage been sold, and something like this at Final Six can be huge. Danny Boatwright wins the bid for $200, and at the immunity challenge where she gets to use it, what happens? Switch positions with any player. So what that means is at any time in this game, you can trade spots with any player. I'm gonna switch with Steph. Danny uses her immunity advantage. Steph doesn't like it. And with that, Steph has only one move left to make. Steph is out. Danny wins immunity. Advantages are huge in the game, and buying one with the money you were just given to you seems like a no brainer. So let's say you are missing home and you need some love to get you through the rest of the game. What is better than buying letters from home? What about buying your loved one? It's a survivor person auction. Not legal in America, but definitely okay in Guatemala. You are bidding on an overnight stay. Your loved one will come back to camp with you. Judd pulls his money and for $880 wins his wife Kristen. Still cheaper than a wedding. Judd has bought his loved one for 880 bucks. <laughs> and it isn't over yet, a twist is thrown into the auction yet again. For the first time ever, Judd has to pick two people to spend the night with their loved ones as well, and no item before has ever had anyone pick others to have that same item as well. With that, we skip ahead to season 13, Survivor Cook Islands, where we introduce another item to the auction, a hot bubble bath and chocolate cake. Parvati wins the bidding at $360, and just as Survivor was probably hoping, an attractive female is bathing on television. I love this day, it's my favorite day. Let's keep this thing going, I'm hungry. As is normal for these auctions, the stakes are ramped up again as they introduce another twist, a secret power in the game. Becky wins it with $640 and is tasked with sending a player to Exile Island and stealing all of their money in the process. Pretty big if you send the right player there, but also could hurt your game if you send the wrong player there. You must send one person to Exile Island immediately and take the rest of their money for yourself. Jeff tries to tease that maybe, just maybe, the hidden immediate idol is still on Exile, giving Candace, who is being sent there, some hope. However, Yule just lays it all out on the line right there to make sure Candace knows her trip to exile will suck and there is no hope for her. There is still the idea of the hidden immunity idol out on exile. I have it. You have the idol. 
I'd be happy. This is a smaller moment, but no one has ever done this before. Jeff puts up a toothbrush, toothpaste, and mouthwash, and Penner wins the bid with $100. However, he also makes sure to tip Jeff as well. Why? Because he's Penner. Something to clean up after eating. 100. You have $100? I just bid it. Here's 100. Here's a tip for you. Thanks. With that, we move to three seasons later to season 16, Survivor Micronesia, and a new rule is implemented. No sharing of money and no sharing of items, which I am a big fan of as that makes this a lot easier for the people at home to understand who has money left. As always, there are covered items and Natalie Bolton bids 240 and as it turns out, it is fruit bat soup. She doesn't want it at all, but James will eat it. He doesn't care. Fruit bat soup. Ah! Oh, wow. Not even interested. Aww. I'll eat it. You want it? Yeah. James, all yours. Natalie then wins a chocolate cake, and Jeff, as he thinks he is being cheeky, says that whoever wins the cake will have another layer to it. Do you get it? Another layer. The layer is a note that says Natalie has to pick three people to eat it with her. For the first time ever, they are timed as they only have 60 seconds to do so. 60 seconds starts now. Go! Go! go. Eric Reichenbach then offers Sari 40 bucks to lick the chocolate cake off of her fingers and she happily takes him up on the offer, creating one of the most memorable moments of any auction and it wasn't even manufactured by production. Mm -hmm. Oh baby. Oh baby. Mm. Oh that's sad. Oh my God. <laughs> Something's wrong with that boy. We move into the next season, Survivor Gabon, where for the first time ever, someone publicly admits that they purposely bid on something just to drive up the price. 100. 160. Sugar jumps right to 160. I love the other much. <laughs> really I just wanted to up the ante for you. <laughs> Enjoy. Later on in the auction, Jeff says the first person to bid $20 wins the covered item for the tribe. Randy immediately bids and wins, and it is clarified multiple times that this is for the tribe. So of course, Randy annoys Jeff by asking. Oh, oh, yes. I can have them all myself if I want. For the tribe, okay, Randy. And what happens next is even better as Randy gives everyone a cookie, but Sugar turns it down, she doesn't want it, and instead tries to give hers to Maddie, which annoys Randy, and he says no. Would you like one? I don't want sure? really, thank you. I could you sure? possibly. Maddie's Sugar? getting it. It's, it's not yours to give to Maddie. I'm the boss. Corinne takes a cookie and a half as per Randy's offer, which leaves one and a half left. Randy gives the other half to Maddie and has one cookie remaining. For some reason, Randy offers Sugar the last cookie, which she takes, and what does she immediately do with it? Thank you. Randy offers Sugar his own cookie. She takes it and gives it to Maddie. And Randy gets nothing and in essence screws himself over, we then trot up to the next season, Survivor Token Sheens, where the very first item goes up for bid and Debbie tries bidding, but actually fails. 40 bucks. 40 to Taj. 50. $20 increments. Uh, 70. <laughs> $20. Which is funny since actually Danny Boatwright was able to do this and get away with it in Guatemala. 100. Lydia with 100. 130. 130. But to be fair, Jeff didn't say in Guatemala that it had to be in $20 increments. It just always amuses me to see new rules put into place after someone does something at a previous auction. Next up, what is this? A smartphone? I actually researched this phone since it is 2008 that this is taking place, and the iPhone is pretty new. And this was considered the iPhone killer, the Samsung Instinct by Sprint. I think I can say with confidence that we all own this phone iPhone is dead, long live the Samsung Instinct by Sprint. Anyways, it contains video messages from home, and for the first time ever, everyone gives Taj their money and lets her have it. See you back in the can. You heard that correctly. Her husband, Eddie George, said he will see her back at the camp, though it does take Taj a minute to connect the dots. There's one light. See you back at the camp! Oh my God. She then gets the option to give everyone else their loved ones if she goes to Exile Island with her husband, which is an easy decision. A night alone with your spouse? <laughs> yeah. You will instead send yourself to Exile Island, where Eddie will come with you. Love one back in the <laughs> Let's move up one season later to Survivor Samoa where an advantage in the next immunity challenge is up for bid, and Jason asks a very important question. Can I ask a question before I bid? 
We both have 500 bucks. What if we both bid 500? Somebody's gonna get to 500 first. Yeah. So it's whoever gets to 500 first? Yeah. Which is an interesting precedent that we had not encountered in any past seasons. He does take the advantage for $500 and like Danny, wins the immunity challenge with it. We then get for the first time in Survivor history, a clue to the hidden immunity idol sold at the auction. 200 to John, going once, going twice, sold to John. I, I'm not gonna sit here and go, I'm gonna let the immunity go, someone else can buy that. Absolutely not. John Fincher wins the bid at $200. Not that it matters since Russell's finding all the idols with no clues anyways. Survivor then has the longest hiatus so far with the auction, and we move five seasons later to Survivor One World, where we finally have someone admit on the show that they're not buying anything. They want to keep this money and take it home with them. Tarzan, you haven't even thought about bidding. I got shocks on my Jeep that I have to repair. <laughs> This will do it. Are you putting me on? No. Nice. However, Tarzan does break down when the layers are busted out, and Alicia wins hers for $500 and sets the price for everyone else's letter as well. The price has been set, $500, but that is the price of the letters. I give it 500. You can buy it right now. Aww. Tarzan going to spin that. Nothing else new or groundbreaking happens in this auction, so we move on to the next season, Survivor Philippines, where Carter wins a baked potato. But it is given a dilemma by Jeff. Keep that baked potato or trade it for a seemingly large amount of rice and beans for the tribe. Should be plenty to get you through the rest of this game. Yeah. Done. Yay! And nothing else of note really happens in this auction as well. However, it needs to be noted that in one world and in this auction, there has been just one player hanging on to all their money waiting for an advantage to pop up, which has not happened before. But it isn't really a big issue because it's only one out of like six, seven, or eight players. We move on to the next season, Survivor Caramone, where Reynold buys a covered item and Jeff doesn't give him one, but actually two options to switch to. Reynold keeps what he has and misses out, even though Cochran did warn him. You can trade it for this. It's a Monty Hall poem. You're always supposed to switch. I don't trust you, Cochran. However, Reynold only wins one slice of pizza, and underneath the second option was the rest of the pizza, and in a very new situation situation that you can clearly see on Jeff's face he was not expecting, Sherry immediately offers $500 for the rest of the pizza, which is new since typically whatever is not picked in these situations is just not sold at all. $500 for the full pizza. Sold, Sherry. And of course, as it is with most of these later auctions, Jeff puts up an advantage and immediately Malcolm goes all in on it. He wins and Jeff adds a new wrinkle. He only gets 60 seconds to read it. He basically has a minute to memorize it because he cannot take it back to camp. I got 60 seconds to read an idol clue. So there's no way without this clue, this idol's gonna be found. With that, we move two seasons later to Survivor Kagayan, where the auction is now truly reflecting where the gameplay is at. It has always been a microcosm of the season, but we have now reached the point of no return as three players out of seven, Tony, Tasha, and Spencer are all waiting for an advantage to come up so they can bid all of their money on it, meaning that only four players are bidding on food and getting great deals. You can even see the confusion on Jeff's face at some points. 20 bucks. 20 to Cass. Nobody bidding against Cass at $20. Sold the cast for 20 bucks. You guys, what are you waiting for? Start spending your money, you cheapo depots. You guys want to eat or what? What is great though is when Wu wins ribs for only 40 bucks and him and Jeff have what I call a romantic moment over dinner. Tender. Sushi. Lathered in barbecue. Later fall. So Jeff finally gives in to what those other three people are waiting for, and Tony immediately says 500, which would have worked in any other season. Remember that, Jason set that back in Samoa. But instead, there's a twist now. Now if multiple people bid 500, there will be a rock draw to see who gets the advantage, and with that we have our first ever rock draw that doesn't take place at Tribal as Tony and Spencer bid $500. Tasha didn't like this offer, so she opts out. So you guys were never gonna bid on food? No. All right, three, two, one. Black is the advantage. Tony draws black. Woo! This advantage does end up winning Tony a clue to the hidden immunity idol, which he does find later on in the episode. So now it is time. Let's move on to the final Survivor auction. But don't worry, it has a lot of goodness to it. 
This happens two seasons after Kaigayan in season 30, Survivor Worlds Apart. We're right out of the gate. The first item is covered and Will wins it for $100. But what exactly does he win? Oh, this is, damn. You just bought yourself out of this auction. Pick up your personal items and head back to camp. Now what happens when he gets back to camp? A container with snacks that he can keep for himself, but instead he shares it with a tribe, and then a whole bullying incident happens over it, and uh, yeah, that's just, it's a thing for another video. But anyways, back to the auction at hand. Jeff straight up asked how many people are waiting to bid on an advantage, and this time, four people raise their hand. I'm not bidding on food? So Dan, Carolyn, Mike, you are not interested in food. You're waiting for an advantage. Which means this just keeps escalating as the auction is no longer really about food and fun, but just about saving up to buy an advantage. We then montage through all of the fun food items so we can get to whatever the auction is devolving into, but for good reason. But hold on there, Jeff has an ace up his sleeve that will force people to spend money. Letters from home. However, Sharin has seen past seasons and knows exactly how this works. If the winner bids only $20, then everyone else can have their letter for $20 as well. In, in the past, Whatever the highest bid ended up being, Jeff let everybody else buy it for that high bid. Everyone agrees to this so that they can bid the remaining 480 on the advantage to have a fair shot at it. And when everyone goes to get their letters, a turn of events takes place that shapes the rest of the season. Mike, did you get, he didn't do it. As Dan finishes up his teary-eyed talk with Jeff about how much he loves his wife, Mike decides to duck out and guarantee himself the advantage, which is a cold-hearted move that he immediately sees just how angry makes everyone else. However, he does end up going back and getting his letter, but by then, the damage is done. That's bull. I'll give it back. So much for your trust, Mike. I can't do it. I can't do it. So when the advantage comes up, there is a three-way tie, and once again, they have to draw rocks to win. You're looking for white. One, two, three. Yeah, baby! Dan has won the advantage. Dan wins, and what does he win? But an extra vote, which is the first time this ever happens. And with that, the Survivor Auction is done, and we haven't seen it since. It is currently, so far, on a 10 season hiatus. So what happened? How did the fun, timeless tradition of bidding money for food and sometimes people turn into a game of waiting for a game advantage? Well, for one, players got smarter. Once it was introduced in season 11, pretty much every advantage, clue, whatever, was a benefit to someone's game more times than not. However, the auction has now been gone for 10 seasons and probably more, and the fans are clamoring for its return. So could it return? And what could be done to remedy the situation Survivor has gotten themselves into? Let me know in the comments, and let me know which auction was your favorite. Thanks for tuning in, and I wanna give an even bigger thanks to the patrons as they made this video happen, and it was made at their request. Once again, thanks for watching.